Morning, boys and girls, bucks and does. It's that time of the year again where you're gonna start seeing lots of posts from me. So make sure you go to the page this is hosted on. If you're obviously you're here already, make sure you like it so you can keep up with the updates as I do them. I'm gonna be doing a lot of live feeds. There's a lot of cool little things I've hinted at and you probably already figured out anyhow. I've got some podcasts coming, two of them. One for the Deer Society that I'll be hosting and interviewing a lot of the Deer Society members on. And also my page, um, the Rod White Bow Show. So I'll get those kicked out to you as soon as they get um, processed, I think it's called, or whatever, um, at uh, iTunes and Podbean and Stitcher and all that good stuff. And so you'll be able to listen to just audio if you want, and you'll also be able to watch the video version on YouTube for certain at least. So there's a YouTube channel and all that good stuff, like I said, I'll kick it out. In the meantime, I was originally planning to do this as a live feed, which I would really like to do as much as possible so that you can see exactly what's happening Real life communication with me, with wild, free-ranging whitetails on, quite honestly, probably quite a bit of public land, some private land, and some private land that I would classify as worse than public land as far as pressure goes. So, I am not hunting on the managed properties that I've done in the past. Times, you, you, many of you know, I managed almost 8,000 acres in seven different tracks, and that, um, and actually quite a few more tracks, like over time, but that was probably my busiest year. And... All that is really awesome. So if you're looking for that kind of information, you can go back in time on the Rod White page. Unless they do get those pages finally combined. I know there's two of them. The one with the elk is the one I'll post most of the information. It's got the newest information. The other one has a lot of back information from um, what it's like to manage properties and control deer environments to manipulate their movements and their habits to put the odds in your favor. None of that of which is going to be happening here. So. I'm just actually out behind my house right now. This is not an area I'll be hunting, but I want to talk to you about what's going on right now in the whitetail world and why yesterday on my personal page uh, I posted, which I won't do my best to keep all my whitetail stuff on here. I posted that you should be staying on timber and you definitely should because if you're hunting a mature whitetail in an environment and he sees the amount of pressure that most people apply to it, he'll move and they're moving anyways quite honestly right now most of the information I get in the middle of two weeks of October is completely useless to me for the rest of the year most of it so one of the things I'm a big proponent of is trail camera banning for people <laughs> that are addicts to cameras I'm not opposed to cameras but we'll get into that in another story um, another feed another topic so behind me you'll see let me find one down there that little guy right there, it's a maple tree. Why is that significant? Because maple leaves this time of the year are a lot like crack for whitetails. Now, this little guy here is actually still green yet, but he's turning yellow. When they hit the ground, they generally don't last long. And if they do, when they turn brown after that whole photosynthesis process happens or has happened, whatever you want to call it, I don't know. I'm not a biologist. I don't claim to be. I just know how to kill things. And I know what things, where they live, eat, sleep, all that fun stuff. And that's how I feel like I've had some pretty good success. So I'm going to share a lot of that with you. In this case, the maple leaves are significant because it's probably an overlooked food source for you. There's a lot of food sources that you're probably overlooking. I'm going to compare it like this. If you are if you could live in a Chinese buffet, and don't tell me you don't like Chinese buffets, because everybody likes Chinese, all you can eat Chinese buffets, or a Golden Corral, or whatever. If you had all your food in one place, along with all your work, all your family, all your friends, anything you needed to survive and live and be happy, I don't, I don't know that you'd go anywhere, really. That's what whitetails are doing right now. That's why it's significant to stay out of there. Other than they are getting bumped around and moved around socially, by an extreme amount of pressure from people all over the place from running cameras to hunting to walking their dog and hiking you might even see some of that in a lot of live feeds because i'll be hunting some public land where people can walk around with their dogs and i've had horses come underneath me before and some of it so you know so most of it i won't have hunted before there is a couple parks that in illinois i'll probably head to that i know that there's there are people with horses and um, it's just kind of cool because sometimes you see them walk by and you know a mature buck not 30 yards from them let the horse go by and then you shoot them so I promise to keep these videos 
as much as possible other than explaining what's going to happen this season like i did right here i'm going to promise to keep them short keep them sweet keep them significant so have a great day and uh i will check in with you very very soon and by the way i guess you're probably glad i didn't do the live feed on this one because somebody would have commented on the pink cup it was clean i'm out see ya